Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome one and all to worship here at beautiful Savior Lutheran Church, where we invite you in Christ to live in grace. Generosity, reaching out, advocacy, compassion, and encouragement. Welcome one and all on this Lenten journey as we gather in this space, either here or wherever the internet may find you, we gather in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome one and all. For those of you in this space, hopefully you have the bulletin. With the insert is a reusable seasonal bulletin for Lent, so please help us be good stewards and, well, reuse it. Uh, and the insert is yours to take. It's got lessons and prayers, uh, the songs, and all kinds of announcements of all, a bunch of things that are coming up. For those of you joining us online, there were links 
uh, that came with everything. Otherwise, you can find it all at beautifulsavior.net and follow along with the uh, PowerPoint that we have during the service. Now, there's a couple of things that are coming up uh, to make you all aware of. A uh, reminder that Children's Corner we have at 10 a.m. currently. It's an opportunity for little ones to find activities and learn and grow during service, and that's right up here. So it keeps me on my toes. This afternoon, there's a couple of things that are going on. One is the, our Cub Scout pack is their Pinewood Derby. So go, 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 for those of you who remember that growing up. But also this afternoon later, we have the uh, Tucson, Arizona Boys Chorus Concert, which will be here. Uh, tickets are $18, it's at 3 p.m. So if you're interested in seeing that performance, that will be here at 3. Now, now that we are into Lent, uh, I've given up my Tuesday nights yet again for something other than teaching a class. And so this Tuesday re brings the return of Pint with a Pastor. And that's at Catalina Brewery at 7. It is an opportunity for some guided discussion, an opportunity for fellowship. And whether or not you drink a pint is up to you. So that is this, and it's the first and third Tuesdays of the month at Catalina Brewery. Then on Wednesday, we continue our midweek services with Jonah, not just a fish story. Now, it's kind of funny, I, we have you know, people online who join us, and they were telling me about the fact that their pastor is also doing Jonah for Lent in Minnesota. And I'm like, really? What are they using? Oh, they have this program. I said, oh, I made mine up as I went along. And that's not just a fish story, so there you go. But join us at 6.15, we're trying 6.15 to see if that's a little easier for people. And remember, if you come and you participate in worship and everything else like that, and you so love the music and you want to be more involved, choir rehearsal starts at 7, and you can just go right into choir. They'll be happy to have you. But it is a midweek service based on Iona and Tizay, and it includes Holy Communion. And then, of course, uh, Thursday, just in case you need something fed, it's not uh, fish, it's meatloaf, it's prime timer's luncheon. The main dish is Bill's famous meatloaf, the, guy, the gentleman sitting behind me. If you go, oh my gosh, meatloaf, I'll just, I'll say this. My wife grew up hating meatloaf, she loves his. So, there you go. Uh, there's a sign up out in the narthex in the gathering area for other side dishes if you wish to bring. Otherwise, lunch on Thursday. One of the things that will happen there and then Sunday is I will do my a presentation on the Iona community, my part of my sabbatical. There were three communities that I participated in, Holden, Tizay, and Iona. Uh, Iona is the third. So at Prime Timers, I will present and also between services next Sunday, I will present my experiences of the Iona community with an eye towards, okay, what are some things we might learn from that community that may be of value to ours. There's all kinds of other things to notice in the insert, uh, lots of other opportunities coming up as we get closer and closer to Easter. Yes, Easter is just a month away, basically, folks. So, yeah, it's Lent. And so I invite you in the midst of Lent to give up something. I'd like you to give up whatever is weighing on you right now and just take a deep breath and give it to God. As we enter into this space, and then rise as you are able and join me in confession and forgiveness. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who journeys with us these 40 days and has sustains us with his gift of grace. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and mercy. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. 
We cause hurt, though you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world, God gave the only Son, so that all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and revives you in the Spirit's power. Amen. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us join our hearts in prayer. O God, our leader and guide, in the waters of baptism, you bring us to new birth to live as your children. Strengthen our faith in your promises that by your spirit we may lift up your life to all the world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading is from Genesis 12th chapter. God's call of Abram and Sarai had a clear purpose that through them all the families of the earth would gain a blessing. As they set out on their journey, they are accompanied by promises of land, nation, and a great reputation. The Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Word of God, word of life. Please join me in reading Psalm 121 responsively. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, from the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord will not let his foot be moved, nor will the one who watches over you fall asleep. The Lord watches over you, the Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Lord will preserve you from all evil and will keep your life. Our gospel for this Sunday comes to us from the third chapter of the gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. This is the familiar story. If nothing else, the last part of it, at least part of it, 
will seem very, very familiar to almost anybody near any Christian. Now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you. Please be seated. <clears throat> You know, some things about me you, you kind of know over time. You know, one, I was a teacher first, but I was a history teacher. At first, I was going to be a math teacher, but all I wanted to teach was subtraction because I wanted to make a difference. Another thing about me is that I love to cook. You know, but I realized, you know, just the other day that while I was trying to take and shredding some cheese, I cut myself. And I really wanted to blame the cheese grater, I really wanted to blame the cheese block, but then I realized it was all on me because with great power comes great responsibility. And this one seems very appropriate. You know, a lot of people mocked me when I said I was going to become a comedian. Well, I went into the business and no one's laughing now. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> And that one you laughed at more than the others. Okay, that says something, doesn't it? It may be a shock for many to realize the fact that I wasn't born knowing I was going to be a pastor. I did not have that vibe growing up. In fact, my darling wife likes to remind me of the times when she would have to convince me to go to church on Sunday morning and my resistance was based on how good the Sunday morning cartoons were. All right. But a large part of that had to deal with ambivalence or outright worry or fear. Because, let's face it, I have seen John 3.16 posted all over the place, you know, Growing up in the 80s, and, you know, it, it, wasn't, there wasn't, it wasn't an official football game unless someone had written at the bottom of the case of beer, John 3.16, and somehow, somewhere, the cameraman held that person, caught that person holding up that sign. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Whoever believes him shall not perish, but have eternal life. We just heard that, Right? God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Yay! But those who don't, for those who believe in him shall not die but have eternal life. And the thing was, more often than not, I heard the second part and not the first. The first was a carrot. The second was the stick. 
You better believe in him or you won't have eternal life. You better believe in him in this particular way or you're doomed. Because also growing up in the 80s, there was the rise of the TV preacher. And it was always fascinating to me when sometimes you catch one of them so adamant and passionate about how some people were just causing so much problems they would break their own pulpit. For God so loved the world he gave his only son. So much of John 3.16 became like uh, so many other comments I've seen in life and even I have been guilty of making at times. The subordinate clause that totally negates what you just said. You know, I love you. You know I do, but you're an idiot. Or those phrases that actually start with no offense but... Let's face it, again, anytime you say anything like that and throw a big butt right in the middle of it, anything you said before is window dressing at best. It might be the carrot to get person's attention, but it really doesn't mean anything. So you better believe. Okay. Flip through the, dick, through the phone book again, child of the 80s. How many different churches are there? And better yet, how many different churches believe that every other different church is going to hell? Don't you believe? But you don't believe right. It's almost like the name Jesus became a shibboleth. And if you don't get that, we need a Bible study on that. It became your password, your co-word. How you pronounced it. Did you say it was Jesus or Jesus? Much less whether or not you allow women to preach or if you had open communion or closed communion or anything else like that. Can you see why I was ambivalent? Why watching Bugs Bunny drop an anvil on Yosemite Sam might have been a little less traumatizing as a child? For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Love, unconditional, but that's not God. The world, yeah, well, that part that looks like us or acts like us or just other human beings, no, my dear brothers and sisters, the word world is cosmos, which means all of creation. From the smallest atom to the most distant galaxy, cosmos. For God unconditionally loves all of creation he gave. There's no earning. There's no deserving. There's no merit in that. Grace that requires our action or response is not grace. It's nothing more than a carrot that rapidly turns into a stick. And that's not what we're about. That's not what we should be about. But, but Pastor, Pastor, I, I, I ask you, I mean, because it says believe, and Jesus later on talks about being the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Pastor, you're starting to start, what do I do with that? Yes, Jesus does say, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He is the way, the truth, the life. Are you Jesus? First question, are you Jesus? No. You are not the way, the truth, the life. We are called to be members of the body of Christ. 
which means something very important. If that's the case, then how are we embodying what it means to be Jesus in the world? For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. How is our presence a gift? How are we being gracious? Again, not to deserve grace because, oh, look, I'm more gracious than you are. But to show what the way is, what the truth is, what the life of God is. Because again, remember, if we're going we're gonna to be the body of Christ, then we'll listen and follow Jesus. And Jesus right there and the upper room discourse, he's sitting there and he washes his disciples' feet, including the one who's going to betray him. He gives them all the Last Supper, including the one who's going to betray him. In fact, quite possibly, Judas was sitting right next to him at that supper. And he says, I give you one commandment. One Love one another. That's how people are going to know you are my disciple. You're with me if you love one another. By the way, again, that word love is unconditional. Love one another. And then he would go on to pray that we might all be one. Not a, not uniform, but unity. Unity in love. Unity in grace. Nicodemus comes out in the dark seeking answers. And Jesus gives him some things to ponder. For us in this time of life, as it is in any time of life, we need to be like Nicodemus. Own the fact that the darkness around us is such that we don't always know. We don't always see. There are things that might make us afraid or make us worry or doubt. But we stay open and looking and searching. And hear that, that the Spirit is going to come. And the Spirit's going to blow as it does. And it's going to go come from where it go, comes from. And it's going to go where it goes. And you're not going to know. And you know what? That's okay. But the Spirit is moving. It's a wind. It's going to do something. Be open. And so this young man who preferred watching cartoons on Sunday mornings, Pinky and the Brain, Freakazoid, Earthworm Jim were very big back then. You know what we're going to do today, Pinky? Same thing we do every day. Try to take over the world. Now, instead I started hearing a message of something else. I'm not trying to take over the world. So love the world. And how did that come to me? When my son was born, the first thing I heard was, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. When my life was such that I realized that at that moment in time, my entire world revolved around the nurturing, the protection, and the development of this very messy, brand newborn child, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Grace is messy. Grace is not always giving you, giving you certainty. Grace is always difficult to hold. But it's there. And it's a sign of God's love for you and for the other. In fact, it's such a sign of God's love for you that it reminds you that the other, the rest of the world, the cosmos, is also loved. Can we believe that? Can we believe that we are loved beyond life, 
and to death, that we are loved and given grace even when we don't deserve it? Can we believe in a God who will give you and anyone else another chance and then another and then another and then another because life and love is what God came to show was important in creation, in the creation of life, but also new life? will we remember the fact that love came down? And then we lifted it up. We put the carrot on the stick. Because that's what we do. And God went, you know, I'm still a carrot. I'm still love. I'm still grace. And the worst that you can do just means I haven't gotten started yet. New life will come by the gift of God's grace, by the gift of God's love in Jesus Christ. And so let us remind ourselves as we struggle in the dark, as we come with our questions, as we seek to know those promises God gives us first that we celebrate in holy baptism. I've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. I've been marked with the cross of Christ forever. I am Christ's. May that be a reminder of love that is unconditional grace that is redeeming for you and the world because Christ didn't come to condemn the world but to save it through that love and that grace so remember that God loves you and so do I amen Join me as we confess the faith of the church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and was descended into the dead. He, there he arose again, he descended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. As we come to the prayers of the church, we lift up the joys and concerns that have been shared with us. Are there any more prayer cards out there that we need to collect? Let us prepare our hearts for prayer. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen. For all those needing health and healing, especially Aaron, Lydia, Nancy, John, Karen, Christian, Bobby Stringfellow as he recovers from surgery. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. I call, answer me, O oh Lord, hear my prayer, O oh Lord, hear my prayer, come and listen to me. For all those dealing with chronic illness or cancer, especially Brittany, Jake, Candace, Jeff, Preston, Ryan, Jerry, Bill, Kit, Isabella, Jen, Patty, Nile, Shirley, Jeannie, Heidi, Barb, Susan, Jordan, Rick, Roy, John, Karen, Mike, Joyce. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear my prayer, O oh Lord, hear my prayer, when I call, answer me, O oh Lord, hear my prayer, O oh Lord, hear my prayer, come and listen to me. For all those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Steve Schmidt, Dan Eskridge, Dawn Sicoria, Erna Werner, Margaret Randall. We also pray peace and comfort for Crystal and John. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. My prayer when I call, answer me. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. In the season of Lent, we are called to reflect on how we respond to our covenant and baptism. Is your generosity shown in ours? Your willingness to stretch out your hand, proclaim through our hands, reaching out. Do others experience a God who knows and cares and speaks up in the ways we advocate for our neighbors? Is the compassion we share a proclamation of the compassion you give to the world? 
is our encouragement and expression of the encouragement you give in the promise of new life. May we know that you so loved the world you gave your only son. May we know your grace and show your grace. For all that else is on our hearts right now. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen. We give you thanks for the gift of life. For you so love this world, you so love this creation. We give you thanks for this gift of life and we give you thanks for the opportunities to share that love and that care for all of creation. For all of the work of our Community Connections teams and all the ways in which we seek to follow you in the world and to show and share your grace, we give you thanks. But we just simply give you thanks for that gift of life, that gift of life that came to us, that is around us, and that we see. So we celebrate the birthdays of James Dew, Jessica Chalsma, Haley Everson, and Randy Carr. And the anniversaries of Joan and Don Swanson, Geneva and Robert Castle, and Betsy and Michael Corsmo. And all those other signs of life, all those other signs of love, for God so loved the world, the creation, life, he gave his son. So may we see it, may we celebrate it, and may we share it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please find some way to share some token of Christ's peace and love with one another now and always. Peace, Dad. I'm going to take off my... <laughs>
bluff before you get over there, Becky? <laughs> Come for the music, stay for the sermon. Present them, them in faithful faith. service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Gathered around the throne of grace, let us proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, yea, thanks be to God. For the one who came, the Lord. For you so loved the world, you came. You were given in love. You came and you gave. And so we remember on the night in which our Savior was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it for us to eat, saying, take and eat all of you. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup contains the blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So may we receive this gift of grace, this gift of love that is unconditional, this gift of love that goes so far beyond just us, that it may, by the gift of your Holy Spirit, raise us up to newness of life, and send us forth proclaiming Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, dear Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, you bear the sin of all the world away. O Lamb of God, you bear the sin of all the world away. O Lamb of God, you bear the sin of all the world away. Come and 
receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness. I invite the congregation to be seated and the community assistants to come forward. For, you know, for those of you gathered in this space, you'll be invited to come down the center aisle in two lines and receive the, the bread. We have gluten-free for those who need it. Just let us know as you come forward. And then you turn to either side. Community assistants will have the wine and grape juice. And uh, then you receive it from them. And then there are two stands off to the side with buckets, little bowls for you to put the empty cups in. There is a prayer station off to this side of the sanctuary for you to spend some time in prayer and reflection. If you're seated on this side, just turn your turn signal on before you change lanes. For those of you joining us online, simple plate, simple cup, bread, crackers, wine, grape juice, something simple. Jesus sat at a holiday banquet feast and took the basic simple things off of that table to remind us of his enduring presence and what God can do with simple things like us. So the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, come receive these gifts of grace and love. Lord, 
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Embodied God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus with the eyes of our hearts open to your promise. Empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Serve in love. 